Hello everyone, uh, Mike Dolan from McLoon's Restaurants here at the Supper Club in Asbury Park. A beautiful summer day out there after that rain came through. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of people gathering down on the boardwalk and getting back to regular everyday life and we're all excited about that. Uh, at McLoon's Restaurants we're going to start uh, serving outside. There'll be outside dining available on the 15th of June. So we very, very uh, much look forward to serving you there at all of our locations. Pier House, Rum Runner, both locations in Asbury Park, CJ's in Tinton Falls, Boathouse in West Orange, and the Robinson Ale House in Red Bank. So we'll see you on the 15th, and hopefully in the interim, uh, maybe you can order to go, some nice takeout food that we have at all of our locations. Each and every location is doing something a little different. So check out our website, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. We're always promoting some cool stuff and we hope to see you out there. Today, we're gonna to be doing some beautiful uh, prime aged New York strip steaks that we got from our friends at Barola Meats. Jay Barola Meats in uh, South Amboy is our butcher uh, that we've shared a really nice relationship with for quite some time. Uh, they were, they were really nice with us and, and cut some beautiful, beautiful pieces of meat for us today. So, we're going to be grilling those. Uh, what I'm going to read right now is what you would get if you would order a chef's box from the Rum Runner. So, we would stuff a box with these two beautiful uh, prime New, New York strip steaks. There'd be some Malden sea salt and pepper. There would be four ears of corn. There would be a wine and a jalapeno. There'd be some extra virgin olive oil. There would be some goat cheese crumbles. And a cilantro. There would be some shiitake mushrooms. There would be a little butter. There would be a little vinegar. I'm running out of room over here. Uh, some ketchup. Some Worcestershire. Some soy some onion and garlic powder, an onion, and a little hot sauce as well. So, the only reason I'm pulling all this stuff out is because we've sold these wonderful boxes and I've been infamous for forgetting one, two, three, maybe four ingredients as I'm cooking. I know what you're saying. Wow, that guy really looks like he's got it together. He doesn't look like he'd be forgetful. I am, trust me. So, I can remember a dish I prepared 11 years ago, but I'll struggle with whether or not I locked the door last night, and my wife will attest to that. So, we're going to be making today some grilled New York strip steaks topped with some sautéed mushrooms and a little... Uh, Jersey corn salad. Jersey, uh, corn's not quite in New Jersey yet, but we're right on the cusp of it. Uh, we're going to throw this on the grill. I'm going to start by preparing these ears of corn. I am going to cut the ends off all four times. God, he's cutting corn. This, could, this episode could be an hour and a half. I promise it won't be. So now we're going to husk the corn. And all that means is taking all that exterior off it. And then you'll have silk, which you can see, and we'll get rid of that too. Corn comes into season in New Jersey. It's really one of the coolest ingredients. It's something that I'll always, 
um, think about with New Jersey, whether it's the great corn we get, the wonderful tomatoes, peaches, and believe it or not, I think of bluefish, but not a lot of people think like that. So, so what we're going to do is just take a quick towel and just rub all that silk off. And some of it will burn, and we're fine with that. promise this is the most laborious of the duties that we have in store for today. So we have our corn. We're going to season them with a little salt and pepper. So they're seasoned. They're going to go right on the grill. And they're going to cook. With that, we're gonna start our New York strip steaks. Here's these two beautiful New York strips that are about 12 ounces each. We're gonna liberally season them on both sides with just salt and pepper. A little corn silk is on there, but that's not gonna hurt anything. A little cilantro too. And there's our steaks. So now they're going to go on to the grill. We're going to try to find, as I've said before, the least hot part. I don't want anything ripping, ripping hot because I don't want that really, really hard sear, which tends to get a little bitter. So when you're looking at your grill and you see that all that white part, that means it's really, really hot. So we want to cook around that. Um, from here, we're going to start some mushrooms. We're going to take our onion. in this kitchen today, huh? A little bit. <laughs> um, so we're going to take the skin off the onion. We're going to give it a dice. In there. We have our mushrooms, about eight pieces of shiitake. If you can't find shiitake and you want to use a portobello, use a portobello. We took the stems off these guys. I like shiitake mushrooms because they have a really nice woody flavor. A lot of these mushrooms come from a place not too far away, Kennett Square in Pennsylvania out by Westchester. I've never been to Kennett Square, but from what I understand from my produce suppliers, it's pretty much the mushroom capital of America. So we have our about an ounce of butter in our saute pan, and we're going to what's called sweat some onions. All that means is we're going to cook them until they're a little translucent. So all that flavor is absorbed in the fat, which is the butter. We're going to turn our corn. So by toasting our corn like that, it's going to bring out a really cool nuttiness to it that we like. We're going to be careful here because we have this flame that's acting up. So with that, we'll just move our steaks. So from here, 
we're going to add our mushrooms. We're going to season just a little butter, or excuse me, a little salt, a little black pepper. We're going to let that cook just for a few minutes. And as you can see, you can do this all on the grill. Right outside at the barbecue would be fine. Um, just as long as you have a nice sturdy pan that can handle the heat. This guy looks good. Almost good. Almost good. Almost good. So our steaks are grilling. Our corn is working. Our mushrooms are working. The mushrooms actually smell really nice cooking in the butter. And onion, which will make anything taste really good. So we're gonna to continue to let that go. Can I ask about timing? I know you're a chef and you know when things are done, but those of us are not. Like I how guess, many minutes aside would uh, like for? So on, on, the, uh, on the New York Strip, I'd go a total of seven to 10 minutes based on thickness for medium rare. What you wanna do is for medium rare, bring it up to about 130 to 135 degrees. Chefs will go by touch. There are a lot of people that use a meat thermometer and that's great. Buy yourself a meat thermometer and, and play around with it. Throw it in right now and you're gonna see that it's nowhere, 60 degrees or 80 degrees or whatever. Um, but that's the only way you learn, is just through repetition. There's some chefs that'll say, this part of your hand feels like medium, and this feels like medium rare, and I don't know about that. Uh, I'm sure I've said that too. So, um, but uh, all it is, is it's just trial and error. And the key with cooking is don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, to be a really good cook, I think you really have to make a zillion and one mistakes. Um, I know I personally have. Um, and I always strive to be a better cook, so. Um, but never at McLoon's. What's that? Never at McLoon's. <laughs> never made a mistake. No, no, that would be the only place I have it. Um, so I'm just pushing my corn off to the side. My mushrooms are doing really, really nice. Um, we spoke about last week, whenever we're cooking, we do want to introduce a uh, acidity to your food. So. I throw in an ounce of red wine vinegar. That is going to really wake those mushrooms up and give it a really, really nice pop of flavor. So our steak is working still, and it really looks nice. Our mushrooms are going pretty well. We're gonna start our corn salad. So for our corn salad, we have a mixing bowl and we're gonna add to it a little bit more onion. On this, I'm just gonna give it a nice thin slice. take our jalapeno and our lemon and our lime, excuse me, and the jalapeno, I think we're just going to cook that in rounds. If you like it spicy, use your entire jalapeno. If you don't, you're not hurting my feelings if you don't use it at all. You're going to take the zest of a lime. Sometimes these guys don't want to cooperate with you, so feel free to use your knife carefully to just maneuver some of that juice out of it. Don't, I don't 
don't know if you should try that at home. I am sort of a quasi-professional. So we have our red onion, our chili, our lime juice. Uh, we're going to get our corn in here, our cilantro, and our goat cheese. Our steaks are working really, really nice. Mushrooms are done. So now we're going to add our corn off the top. We're going to hit these one more time with our towel just to make sure any silk is off. And I love doing this, adding it to a salad. I could eat it raw. I used to work with a chef, Mark Michael Ajak, at the Black Trumpet in Spring Lake that would just eat copious amounts of raw corn. Copious. I never saw anything like it. And he would just throw this stuff in his mouth all day. And I thought it was weird until I started eating raw corn. And I really enjoyed it. And we have some great corn in New Jersey. It's all every year. Hey, how's the corn, you know? Let's hope, let's hope we have a good year with corn this year. Maybe a little optimism when it comes to corn because uh, we have had a pretty difficult run and we can sure use some good news. And speaking of which, we're never going to go too political on this show at all, but treat each other really nicely. You know, there's some, we're in some crazy times right now, and uh, it's really, really sad to see what's going on in our country. And let's hope we can all stay calm and talk about things as opposed to reacting to them. So, um, back to state. So, our steaks are working really nice. We're just about done there. Our corn's got our jalapeno in there and onion. We're going to add a little cilantro. Cilantro is a great, great summer herb. Um, we're going to season. We have our lime juice. Tomato would be fantastic in here. Uh, some olive oil. And we're gonna anoint it with just a little goat cheese. We're gonna give it a quick toss. And that's gonna be our side dish for our steak. Mushrooms done. Now we're going to make a really, really quick steak sauce. So, our steak sauce is going to be six tablespoons of ketchup, two tablespoons of Worcestershire. Put a soy sauce, some onion powder, some garlic powder, and some a, half, a quarter of a teaspoon of balsamic. We're going to mix all this up. I thought 
thought it would be cool to sort of do like a little A1 like sauce. Just to add a little different component to our plate. And that's that. So, our steaks are about rare right now. We're going to give these another two minutes. They're a little fatter than I thought. So, we're going to get our plate ready. I think, oh, I forgot to use something. I forgot to use our Tabasco sauce for a little heat in our steak sauce. So, so we finished it with just a little hot sauce. Use whatever hot sauce you'd like. I love Tabasco, I always have, but now I'm starting to uh, look into different hot sauces. So we're gonna go to the plate. What other kind of cheese could you use besides goat is that a question. That would be phenomenal. Something salty, manchego would really give a nice, um, manchego would be really nice, which is a Spanish sheep's milk cheese. Parmigiano Reggiano tends to work with everything. Um, so uh, any of those cheeses I would use, I mean, if you buy a nice uh, uh, Gouda, you know, like a Beanster Gouda would be really cool. I don't think I would necessarily recommend mozzarella or American, but well, you know, one of your high-end cheeses would be really, really great. So we're going to go to our plate. So we have our corn salad. dish for Father's Day. Um, and the Rum Runner is going to be specialing this dish for the week too. So our good friend Dan Keynes, the executive chef over there, um, reach out to the Rum Runner, uh, order one of these beautiful uh, New York Prime Age strips. I promise you, you're really going to enjoy it. It'll travel really, really well. So our meat's resting. Whenever you have a chance to rest meat before you cut it, it's the best way to go. If you cook something for 10 minutes, see if you can rest it for like eight, you know? What that'll do is it settles the meat down so the second you cut it, the juices don't go everywhere. The juice, juices tend to settle and redistribute themselves and assures you of a nice um, juicy steak. So our steaks are going to the plate. We have a little mushroom, and I have a little cilantro. I want a little green in there. So that's going to crown. And if you want to get fancy with this, if you want to run it around your plate, by all means do so. I like the sweet and salty and tangy aspect of this sauce. I just find that it works really, really well with, with any type of red meat. Um, there you have a beautiful dish for Father's Day, a beautiful dish you can buy at Rum Runner. Tonight, a prime uh, New, New York strip, some corn salad with jalapeno and cilantro, some sauteed shiitake mushrooms, and our McLoon steak sauce that we sort of just invented. So, uh, but it will find its way onto our menus too. So, um, 
there you have it. I hope you uh, you enjoyed this presentation. Again, we got these beautiful steaks from Garola Meats, our butcher. They were they were fantastic with us. Um, reach out to us at the Rum Runner. Uh, order something. Uh, if you have any questions about food, you can personally reach out to me at mdolan at mcclunes.com. I'll certainly um, handle any or answer any of your questions. And it's really a privilege to be cooking for you. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Do you want to promo anybody at 6 o'clock tonight? Tim McClune at 6 o'clock, Tickling the Ivories. Uh, I don't know what the theme of tonight's show is. There is none. Okay, but I can guarantee it's going to be a great, great show, as all Tim shows are. So please uh, join us, at, uh, join us uh, at 6 with Tim downstairs at the Robinson Air Owl House. It'll be a great night. What about next week, Mike? Do you know what you're making? Yes, I do. So my wife and I are just absolutely obsessed, as all the kids say, obsessed uh, with uh, Bell and Evans chicken. So we're buying. We're going to bring in some beautiful uh, split breasts on the bone. We're going to make a really cool Jersey tomato gravy. We're going to do some rice and some stewed zucchini. Uh, Lately, I'm into some really neat stuff that's coming out of the South. And this is Southern inspired, but I'm putting a Jersey twist on it. And uh, so I hope you like it. And there'll be chef boxes available next Monday or, or earlier, if you so do choose, for purchase and pickup at Rum Runner. All right, thank you. Thank you.